So, which wood new expansion? Six cards have been released so far. Yes, I don't think it will be relevant for now until we see more cards coming up. Pumpkin Peasant, 3 mana 2 4, life steal each turn, and this is in your hand. Swap its attack and health. Yes, you can get a 3 mana 2 4, you can get 3 mana 4 2. It's a heavy card, doesn't belong in constructed. Like 2 4 is always weak, and you are not playing 3 mana 4 2, you can just play like 4 2 stealth. Phantom Militia, 3 mana 2 4, Echo and Taunt. 3 mana 2 4 is very weak. Taunt doesn't make it much better. The fact you can play it on turn 6 and summon twice, turn 9, summon 3 times, it's not super relevant. On 6 mana, you want to be doing very, very powerful stuff. You don't want to be playing 2 to 4 turns. Like, the advantage of you having something to do on turn 3 just like not good enough. Like, 3 mana 2 4 is not good enough. Shaman has a 3 mana 2 4 heal for 3. And it's still very bad, it doesn't find a card anywhere. And this isn't even an elemental. Card is bad. Mechanic is cool. So, Echo. Uh, Unstable Evolution has Echo Mechanic. You can play it as many times as you want. Militia Commander, 4 mana 2 5, Rush. Battlecry game plus 3 attack this turn. A Warrior card. This is like a removal. Um, good point of it. Uh, you can Battle Rage after you play it and charge into something you can kill. It's single target removal, 4 mana. You can deal 5 damage to anything and then it still kind of stays on the board. Can be stopped by taunts. I think it's a meta-dependent card, because on a paper it's pretty good if you can charge into something relevant. But if the meta will be like taunt heavy, like let's say if you play against Call to Arms and they get Righteous Protector, this card just doesn't do anything. So it's meta-dependent card. If the only aggro deck on ladder is Murloc Paladin, I guess Murloc Paladin will be gone. Like, I don't know what to expect, guys. It's, diff it's just a new meta, I'm just... Like I can say for sure, Phantom Militia and Pumpkin Peasant are both terrible. This card is good if there will be no, like, annoying taunts. Uh, you can you can play and stop Militia from trading into your good stuff. Again, Grain Main, uh, six man six five start of the game. If your deck has only seven cast cards, only even cast cards, your starting hero power casts one. Okay, start line is very shitty, but it doesn't have to be in your hand. Advantage of you having this. Zero, one mana hero power is not even so high. Like, why can you even, even use it? A, a one mana hero power. Like, only Hana has a good enough hero power, which you can use repeatedly to your advantage. Isn't just a good card for Shaman? Yeah, I guess Shaman is also a consideration, but like, you can play two fours and you can play zero mana cards. No, I just don't trust playing it. It's no deck. I guess uh, if it's even cost cards, you can play it in Shaman, right? You're fine without once. You're kind of fine. You're, you're okay without three drops right now, unless they will introduce better ones. And if you hero power cast one, you can hero power always on turn one. So you can always get a totem. Tap on turn one. No, it's not for warlock. You can run void lords. You can run despicable dreadlords, doom guards. What's the point of life tap if you can't run all those powerful demons? A zoo without one drops. I guess you can run Wisps and uh, Snow Flipper Penguins. Play the Death Knight, you lose the bonus. Uh, it doesn't matter, like... Of course, like at that stage you don't even need uh, your hero powerful on mana. I mean, Shaman kind of interesting, I think. Shaman doesn't have... Like right now, it really depends on Wizard will release. But maybe it will be played in Shaman. Because if you can play hero power on turn 1 always, hero power is so powerful. Thing from below is rotating out, so... And uh, you cannot play... Um, you cannot play the Windshear Stormcaller since it's 5. But I guess you don't really want to, because this card is just crap, even if you hero power cast 1. I don't know about Shaman. Like it, I mean, if Shaman will be playable, maybe this card will be too. It just depends on what cards will be released, right? As of now, like, I would I would probably play... Uh, no, I wouldn't be playing it, because... Uh, Shaman is relying on Evolve mechanic right now, and you can play Evolve. And right now there are no good Shaman decks in general, so this deck, this card will not change anything. So it really depends on what will be released. It can be played in Shaman, so I guess, if there will be enough support. Azalina Soul Thief, 7 mana 3-3, three, three, but require place your hand with a copy of your opponent's. 7 mana 3-3? Three, three? What about I just play Divine Favor? Dust. Baku, Baku the Moon Eater, start of the game. Your, if your deck has no only odd cast cards. Upgrade your hero power, 9 mana 7, 8. Yeah, I was thinking of warrior. Only outcast cards. So, you can run brawl. 
You can run... You can't run Blood Razor. Let me see. So you can run Brawl, and you can tank up into Reckless Fury. That's very powerful. Like, you can always get this 4 damage AoE on turn 5. You can run Shield Block. You can run Fireworks. No Executes. You can run Shield Slam, though. There may be some sort of Warrior deck you can play it in. 9 mana, 7, 8 stat line. Yeah, not the greatest, but it's something you can do. You cannot run the Death Knight, though. Death Knight is very powerful. Has to be Fatigue Warrior. You cannot run Geist. Yeah, Geist is Frozen Throne, still stays. Yeah, I know Oracle is is gone, but it's not like you can play Deadman's Hand anyway. It's just like old school Fatigue Warrior, no call lights, just very fair deck. You're trying to kill every single threat your opponent has. If you fail to succeed, you just lose. And if you manage to do it, you just win because your hero power gives you 4 armor. It, it won't work so well against Warlocks and uh, Priests can just OTK you. It's tough to see, but it's a new year and so many cards are rotating out. Very underwhelming stuff can become powerful, so it will be a different meta. I just don't know what happens to the Warlock. Will it still be around the way it is? I think so, right? Because all the powerful stuff was introduced in uh, Frozen Throne expansion. Frozen Throne doesn't rotate, Mistress of Mixtures is gone. Not a single card, like only Mistress of Mixtures is gone. Everything else is still there. So Warlock, like, Warlock will dictate a power level of decks in general. Like, Blizzard just cannot do, they just cannot get away without making classes capable of competing against Warlock. And it's so difficult. Oh, not thus? Not thus. Blood Reaver is good enough. And it's so difficult to do it, like, Think about all the good stuff from previous expansions, it will be gone. But Warlock, it dictates the power level. How can you, can, how can you like, you, you only have such, so few cards in your card pool to bring into the game if, if it's one expansion and you can't uh, increase it anyhow. It will never lead to any good consequences, I don't think. Maybe some of the Warlock cards has to be nerfed. Maybe they will announce it later because I find it very tough to balance the game this way without breaking it. They've had to print broken cards for classes, and broken cards are always terrible. A good example is Call to Arms. If you draw it, you win the game. If you don't, you lose. You don't, you don't want this in Hearthstone. And the only way to achieve this power level drop is to nerf cards from the Warlock. I like the new mechanic. It's too early to say if any cards will be good or not, unless it's obvious, like in case of those I named before. Phantom Militia and Pumpkin Peasant, those are very terrible.